just about. Keep going. And I will persecute them with the sword, with the famine, and with the pestilence, and will deliver them to be removed to all the kingdoms of the earth to be a curse and an astonishment and a hissing and a reproach among all the nations whither I have driven them. You see that? We are the lowest man on the totem pole everywhere we are. Over here, let's say we living in ghettos. We committing all, most of the crime. We, um, let's say we leading the, the nation in pretty much every negative statistics. It's Black people and Hispanic people We're just leading the nation in everything. Keep going. Because they have not hearkened to my words, said the Most High, which I sent unto them by my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them but ye would not hear, said the Most High. Hear you therefore the word of the Most High, all ye of the captivity whom I have sent from Jerusalem to Babylon. You're going to 21, right? No, that was, that was it. That's it. You see that? Okay. So even though the Most High sends us prophets and teachers, we still won't listen. We still won't learn. Still won't pay attention to the word that's coming forth. So therefore, you know, that's where we end up. He end up hurting us with disease and famine and pestilence. Let me get this article. And this is uh, Yahoo uh, Finance. There will be in short supply. The, these foods will be in short supply in 2023. So stock up now. It was a bad year for food shortages in 2022, with categories including eggs and baby formula hit hard. Unfortunately, 2023 could see its own batch of shortages. Here's what consumers should start stocking up on now before prices soar and products likely become harder to find on store shelves. Uh, the first item is corn. Historically, Ukraine has been one of the world's leading providers of corn. But that's all changed since Russia's invasion, which has no end in sight. As such, we'll be seeing less corn that is pretty major. This is a pretty major issue since corn is an ingredient in so many other American products, including chips, salad dressing, and even soda. The second item, bread. A bread, flour, and wheat shortage are, are, are likely on the horizon because of the ongoing war in Ukraine. R Russia and Ukraine account for close to 20% of the world's cereal grain production. Number three, vegetable oil. Several vegetable oils, canola oil, sunflower oil, soybean oil, and palm oil are expected to be in short supply over the next several months. This is due to a few factors, including Indonesia's decision to halt the export of palm oil and continuing droughts around the globe. Yes. Mama. Okay. Mama. She'll be in a minute. Okay. Go back upstairs. The uh, uh, baby formula. Ongoing baby formula shortage is expected to last through the spring of 2023, according to a recent report from the Ricky Beckinser, the maker of baby formula, John Infamil, writers reported. The shortage is persistent persisting mainly because the issues that led to the initial shortage last year, including the pile of recalls and labor shortages led to such a monumental supply shortage. Fifth one, champagne, and I hope that ain't, y'all ain't too worried about champagne, but let me get um, Ezekiel 12, one and two. I'm coming, I'm having technical difficulties. I, I can't see a thing. 12, 1 and 2? Yes. You got it? Oh, you need yeah. me to grab it? I got it. Ezekiel 12, 1 and 2. The word of the Most High also came unto me, saying, Son of man, thou dwellest in the midst of, of a rebellious house, which have eyes to see and see not. They have ears to hear and hear not. 
for they are a rebellious house. You see that? Because we rebel, see, this is the topic of this chapter. The house of Israel being a rebellious people against the Most High. Drop down to verse uh, 16 through 20. Ezekiel 12, verse 16 through 20. But I will leave a few men of them with from the sword, from the famine, and from the pestilence, that they may declare all their abominations among the heathen where they come. And they shall know that I am the Most High Yah. Moreover, the word of the Most High came to me, saying, Son of man, eat thy bread with quaking. And, and drink thy water with trembling and with carefulness. And say unto the people of the land, Thus said the Most High Yah, of the inhabitants of Jerusalem and of, uh, and of the land of Israel, they shall eat their bread with carefulness and drink their water with astonishment, that her land may be desolate from all that is therein, because of the violence of all them that dwell therein. And the cities that are inhabited shall be laid waste, and the land shall be desolate, and ye shall know that I am the most high. And you see that? Because in the most high, he go, he said he will only leave a few men. So he will leave most people will not make it. And he go leave a few just so they'll know why he did what he did. You know, that's the style of the most high. He go always leave a few to tell the tale. And you know, the servants, he's telling them to. Eat and drink with fear and trembling. So, you know, that that's that's how the most high get down. So if you want to be around to get on his bad side, you know, I wouldn't suggest it. Let me get second Ezra's 15, 5, and 7. Second Ezra's. 15. Yep. 15 and 5. 15 and 5. Behold, said the most high. I will bring plagues upon the world. The sword, famine, death, and destruction. Keep going. For wickedness hath exceedingly, exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and the hurtful works are fulfilled. You see that? So the most high he has to get rid of he using the sword and famine. And all these different manners of death and destruction encourage the wickedness from the world because it's it's getting bad out here. Like I said, you look at all the crazy stuff going on, all this LGBTQ stuff that's going on. He's like, you know, at the rate we're going, we just go destroy ourselves. The most I ain't got to do nothing. But <laughs> let me get the next article since we're talking about this famine. And this is on uh, USA Today. 18,000 cows killed in an explosion. Fire at Texas Dairy Farm may be the lar largest cattle killing ever. The fire spread quickly through the holding pens where thousands of dairy cows crowded together waiting to be milked, trapped in deadly confines. After subdu uh, subduing the fire at the West Texas Dairy Farm Monday evening, officials were stunned at the scale of livestock behind Livestock death left behind. 18,000 heads of cattle perished in a fire at the South Fork Dairy Farm near Demet, Texas, or about 20% of the cattle slaughtered in America on any given day. A dairy farm worker rescued from inside the structure was taken to a hospital and was in critical but stable condition as of Tuesday. There were no human casualties. It's mind boggling, Demet Mayor. Roger Malone said, I don't think it's ever happened before around here. It's a real tragedy. It was the biggest single incident death of cattle in the country since the Animal Welfare Institute, a Washington-based animal advocacy group, began tracking barn and farm fires in 2013. How many cows died in dairy fire? 18,000, enough for 25, 26 football fields. That easily surpassed the previous high, a 2025 upstate New York dairy farm that consumed about 400 cows, says Alec Granger, a policy associate at the Institute. So you see that? The, basically, the fire was caused by um, some equipment malfunction. And um, like I said, about 18,000 cattle 
pair. So I looked it up. You know, and these are dairy cows, but you know, they still make meat, you know, they still use their uh use them to create meat. And so you're kind of losing two two yeah. forms of food, you know, losing to killing two birds. Because oh, I think they're gonna require you to uh, sell you. Yeah. Losing your dairy production oh. and you losing the source of meat. Because uh dairy, I was like I said, I did a little reading about it after they're about five or six years old and they're done producing milk at a I guess a substantial rate. Well, they um they kill them to make meat out of them, and the average cow gives you about four hundred and forty pounds of meat. So if you do four hundred and forty times eighteen thousand, that gives you almost seven point nine million pounds of meat. That's a lot of meat. <laughs> plus, like I said, plus all the dairy. That you know, the products that you can make from dairy with that. Let me get Ecclesiasticus 39, 28 through 31. Because you, you know, the most high clearly ain't playing no games out here. So the wild mark, uh, what was the what was the script again? Uh Ecclesiasticus 39, 28 through 31. Ecclesiasticus 39. 39, yeah, uh, 39, 28 through 31. The book of Ecclesiasticus, Sirach, chapter 39, <clears throat> verses 28 through 31. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their fear, their force, and appease the wrath of him that made them. Fire and hell and famine and death, all these were created for vengeance. Teeth of the wild beasts and scorpions, serpents, and the sword punishing the wicked to destruction. Verse 31. They shall rejoice in his commandment. They shall be ready upon the earth. Then when need is, and when their time is come, they shall not transgress his word. Verse 32. Therefore, from the beginning, I was resolved and thought upon these things. I just needed and 31. I left yeah, them in right. Is that it? <laughs> yeah, just 31. All praises. But yeah, you see that the uh, Most High sent all these spirits of vengeance, and like I said, famine and the sword are uh, two of them, two of many that He will be sending, and uh, they not go transgress His commandment when He sent them to do what they, what He created them to do. They go be happy to do it. Mm -hmm. See that? Let me get uh, Jeremiah forty two twenty one through twenty two. The book of Jeremiah. What chapter are we at? 42, 21 and 22. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 42, verse 22. 21 and 22. 21. 21 and 22. And now I have this day declared it unto you, declared it to you. But ye have not obeyed the voice of the Almighty, your Yah nor anything for the for the which he have sent me unto you. Now, therefore, know certainly that ye shall die by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence, in the place whither ye desire to go and to sojourn. You know, I pulled that one because uh, you know how you hear a lot of people saying, oh, we go get out of America. We go go to Africa. We go go to wherever they say they go go. All praise. You see what the Most High say, whether you desire to go, wherever you don't want to go. That's right. These plagues are going to follow you. If you're not keeping his word, it don't matter where you go. And they go over there and they go over there. Let me get this, uh, this last article about this food shortage. This one also USA Today. Global rice shortage possible in 2023. Prices are expected to remain high, analysts say. This is also 
a clear indicator that these plays go follow you everywhere. In 2023, the global market for rice, see, the global market for rice could face its biggest shortage in decades, according to industry analysts. Production of rice is dropping, and the industry is expecting to experience its largest deficit between supply and demand in 20 years, according to Fit Solutions, a credit rating agency recognized by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. Rice prices have been high since the start of COVID and the, of the COVID-19 pandemic, and the expected shortage. And the expected shortage means prices will likely remain high. CNBC reported. While in production in China and Pakistan, as well as in the US and Europe, have meant the supply of rice is shrinking compared to global demand. Why is there a rice shortage? Bad weather in rice producing regions around the world led to a drop in rice production. Additionally, Putin's war in Ukraine drastically pushed up the cost of wheat, which has in turn increased demand for grain alternatives like rice. CNBC reported. In 2022, parts of China known for producing rice were hit by devastating flash floods. At the same time, different parts of China that also produce rice were impacted by a severe drought. So in China, way on the other side of the world, a, a flash flood and a severe drought in the same country. If this ain't the most high doing it, I'll, you know, come on now. Pakistan was also negatively affected by flooding. Standing water caused the country's rice production to slip by 6 million tons, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture. China is the world's largest producer of rice, while Pakistan produces around 7.6% of the world's supply, putting it in the top five rice-producing countries, according to the Trade and Development Authority of Pakistan. So you see that? Well, you, you look at different places around the world they going through it just as well so if you think you're finna move somewhere and escape all these plagues you got another thing coming let me get um jeremiah 14 13 through 16 because the most high is not playing jeremiah 13 14 13 through 16 jeremiah 14 the book of Jeremiah 14, verses 13 through 16. Then said I, I, almighty power, behold, the prophets say unto them, ye shall not see the sword, neither shall ye have famine, but I will give you assurance of peace, assurance of peace in yeah. this place. You see that? So that's talking about your, your T.D. Jakes and your Joe Osteens and your, all your uh, prosperity doctrine teaching pastors right there. Keep going. Then the Almighty said unto me, the prophets prophesy lies in my name. Prophesy what? They prophesy lies in my name. See that? I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision of div divination and a thing of naught and the deceit of their heart. You see that? So uh, uh, if, if your pastor saying all these positive things that don't have nothing to do with the famine, that don't have anything to do with dying by the sword, that don't have anything to do with all the death and destruction that's right here prophesied in the Bible, then clearly he is not a prophet that the Most High sent. He talking out of his own heart is right there. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Therefore, thus saith the Almighty concerning the prophets that prophesy in my name, and I sent them not. Ye that say sword and famine shall not be in this land. By sword and famine shall those prophets be consumed. You see that? So like, and, and when, when that time comes, you go see your Joe Osteens and your T.D. Jakes. You go see them dying from starvation. You go see them being set on fire. You go see them dying some horrible death because they prophesied lies in the name of the Most High Yah, and he does not play that. Keep going. And the people to whom they prophesy 
shall be cast out into the streets of Jerusalem because of the famine and the sword, and shall and they shall have none to bury them. Bury them, them, their wives, nor their sons, nor their daughters, for I will pour their I will pour their wickedness upon them. You see that? So even the people that follow them, that get food and follow them, they not going to make it either. So, you know, read this Bible and get you some understanding to see what the Most High is saying, because every, especially with the famine, I just showed you that the famine is on the edge. It's, it's, it's coming. It's prophesied in the Bible. If you just look at the news just a little bit, you will know something is going to happen that's not good. That's right. So when these people tell you these blatant lies, you know, you can't be deceived by it because if you do, then, you know, you go meet a similar fate that they go meet. Let me get Isaiah 65, uh, 13 through 14. The book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, chapter 65. What verses you got? 13 and 14. Verses 13 and 14. It reads, Therefore, thus saith the Almighty Yah, Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart and shall howl for vexation of spirit. You see that? So uh, the servants of the Most High, they go, we go be um, in good standing. We go be eating through these times. We're going to be uh, okay in these times. And keep going. You read verse 14. I did. We're going to read it again. Okay, yeah, verse 14. Verse 14. Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart and shall howl for vexation of spirit. You see that? We're going to be praising the Most High for bringing us through that tribulation. Everyone else is going to be perishing from their tribulation. Uh, let me get... um. One last verse. Let me get Job 5, uh, verse 6 through 8. The book of Job, chapter 5, verses 6 through 8. Although affliction cometh not forth of the dust, neither do of trouble spring out of the ground, yet man is born unto trouble, and the sparks fly upward. I will seek unto the Almighty, and unto Yah will I commit my cause. You see that? We're going to, it's going to automatically always be trouble in the world. We're born in the trouble. It's right here. But when you seek the most high, you know, he'll get you out of that trouble. Let me drop down to verse 20 through 22. Verses 20, Joel 5, verses 20 through 22. In famine he shall redeem thee from death, and in war from the power of the sword. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue, neither shalt thou be afraid of the destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh, neither shalt thou be afraid of the beast of the earth. You see that in that time we... The Most High is going to save us from the death. He's going to save us from the war that's coming up. He's going to save us from the famine and the sword. You know, he said he's going to save us from the scourge of the tongue. So you've been not even, what's that scripture? A dog shall not even wag his tongue against the children of Israel that's keeping the commandments at that time. And, uh, you know, we go laugh at that tribulation because we go make it through it. You know, and with that, I, I yield shalom. Oh, praise the shalom, shalom. That, that was a great, great lesson. Great, great lesson. Yeah, great the water. Lesson. Hold on, give me one second, Ellie. I can...